live. Welcome to the crackberry.com podcast for Tuesday, October 17th, 2017. Pretty good job, Adam. Hey, everybody. Crackberry Kevin here, joined by Adam Zeiss and Blaze for what is going to be one of our best podcasts of all time. We're going to be in motion <laughs> on the ocean. We're going to be in motion for the next half hour to 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to talk Blackberry Motion. We're going to talk Blackberry Key One. We're going to talk um, other stuff. We're going to talk about Kevin's crazy weight loss thing, fundraiser we did. <laughs> Adam, too, you're looking very svelte, Adam. Thank you for noticing. You're looking great. I feel like uh, Blaze, you're the only one falling, holding us back right now, but that's okay. You're Blaze. So. <laughs> If I lose any weight, I'll freaking disappear. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay. Well, we'll get to that at the end of the show. So if you care about things like health and fitness, then uh, stick around for after the BlackBerry talk. But we got to start with some sponsors today because I don't know what happened, but the Crackberry podcast is in like insane demand. And I'm like a huge fan of podcasts. I listen to them all the time. And my favorite part of most shows is the sponsors. And then I don't know. I One day the sponsorships just rolled in. So I'm going to run through them really quick. Um, if you don't like sponsored callouts, you can just skip a couple minutes, but I just want to go bang, 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 bang. And all of the stuff we're promoting today is super good value. Of course, starting with, um, you know, BlackBerry, because if you're not currently owning a BlackBerry or thinking about buying a BlackBerry key one or a motion, um, I'm not sure why you'd listen to this podcast. So, you know, thanks for sponsors at BlackBerry. You can head to blackberrymobile.com and uh, get yourself uh, hooked up with a device. They're rolling out in many countries around the world. So depending where you live while you're listening to this, you have to do some research potentially, but that's what Crackberry is for. Number one. Number two, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, just around the corner. And thrifter.com is your place to go for all the crazy Black Friday deals coverage. Um, they've been ramping up like mad this year. Uh, I've saved much money on many things I never knew I wanted to buy, but then I see them on Thrifter and I'm like, oh my God, I need to buy this right now. So if you're not yet subscribed to the Thrift or Newsletter, you're not visiting daily, make it your daily habit. Um, you know, other than the Crackberry daily habit, uh, the Thrifter habit's probably the next best thing. Pretty good, right? We're flying through these. <laughs> yeah, next yeah. one, next one. I like this one, Game Stash. So this is like an exclusive teaser launch for a new service on Android phones that uh, you can get a hold of, but they haven't done like the big bang push yet, uh, but it's coming. So. Game Stash, G A M E S T A S H S T A S H dot com. It's actually a subscription gaming service for Android phones. And they have an offer right now. You can get a two week free trial, so you don't have to spend anything. And it's five bucks a month after that. You basically install the Game Stash store onto your phone. Works on the key one, obviously. And from there, you basically have access to like 300 games. And, you know, the, the catalog, kind of like Netflix for gaming on your phone and the catalog will change up a little bit month to month. Um, there's a lot of like AAA good titles, et cetera, et cetera. But the best part is all the advertising has been removed. It's an, if it's an app that was previously paid, it's free. Or if it's an app that used to have all these like coins and, and crappy buy-ins that drive you insane, it's basically been reworked. So you get like free coins in the game and you don't have to spend any more than that five bucks a month ever. So if you're like a casual gamer, who's, you know, commuting all the time and you just want to play games without, freaking avoiding ads and doing all these buy-ins or you know maybe you have a kid in the house who uh wants a new game every day and you don't feel like buying it or figuring it out game stash it's your solution so check it out gamestash.com you can sign up for your free trial and our last sponsor of the day is mint sim and uh this one i'm very excited about because i just spent a month in the u.s and normally I do my Rogers roam like home when I'm traveling from Canada to there. And, you know, that works. It's actually pretty reasonable. It used to be insanely expensive years ago to be a Canadian in the U.S. It's a little bit better now, up to a certain number of days, and then you start to pay more money again. And uh, Mint Sim is what you call an, an MVNO. It's working off the T-Mobile network. And basically you can order that. You don't need to have a phone. You don't need to sign a contract. You go to the mintsim.com website and you can buy a plan and their plans are pretty cool. It's kind of like um, the, ch the prices are really low because you can buy bulk up front. So instead of paying like month to month for month for data, you can buy like three months of data in a bulk package and then use it up and it gets cheaper. And um, you know, they mail you the SIM card right away. You pop it in your phone, you're up and running like very self-serve. It's, it's very, 
easy and it works really well. And I probably have more talking points for them that I'm skipping. So Adam, did I miss anything? Because I think you're a MidSim user, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's uh, it's like one of those things that's almost too good to be true, but it's not because it's super cheap, like you said, and you can pretty much decide how much you need. Um, you know, you can do three months, three, excuse me, three months, six months, twelve months, um, and it's super cheap in comparison to big carriers. It works off T-Mobile, um, and I know some people have second lines if you have second phones, or you know, if you have a line for work and you just want a cheap personal phone, then it's great and it gives you a ton of data. Um, you know, and it's no contract, you bring your own phone, so you can use it if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. So it's literally oh. like, you know, throw down 15 bucks and there you go. And the super cool thing with it, so this is actually the BlackBerry Key One from India that has dual SIM in it. <laughs> so I left my Rogers SIM in it and used the Mint SIM card. So that I was using data for, for, for Mint SIM the whole time, but then I was actually using for, you know, text messages, still my, my Rogers SIM. Uh, for things like two-step authentication that come to my Canadian numbers. So it was pretty pretty dope. It was one of those usage cases where I was like, oh, having the dual SIM thing is kind of uh, actually nice for a person who travels a lot. And if you do go to mintsim.com, uh, there's a coupon code CB free ship, C-B-F-R-E-E-S-H-I-P, which is going to give you, uh, basically they're going to ship you it for free. So you save the money on that, which is awesome. And with that, oh my God, that's like the first time in all our years we've ever done uh, read out sponsorships. I feel I like that the, long. I think it's that the, long. We're like we've the, ever had a sponsor. <laughs> we're like the hot dudes at the party right now. So, <laughs> with that, we're about ten minutes into the podcast. Again, this is a podcast I don't want to listen to because I love listening to the ads more than the podcast typically. And <laughs> I hope you feel the same way too. Blaze, take it away. Uh, let's talk BlackBerry Krypton, Krypton, which is no longer called the Krypton. Well, well Krypton. you can't call it that anymore. You got to call it the BlackBerry Wait. Motion. I'm gonna wear a hat so I feel like. Oh, what boy, is this? Like, what is this? I've never seen this. <laughs> I've only seen Kevin wear a hat like once, and that was at the at the. Uh, You've inspired York, me. Uh, game. Oh yeah, that's right. I like. Oh, uh, but anyways, that. anyways, the BlackBerry Motion uh, officially got announced. So uh, that basically, as uh, as we went through everything, the BlackBerry Motion is a full touchscreen device as per the rumors. Everybody caught the early rumors about it. Uh, it skips the keyboard, has a huge battery, is waterproof, is dustproof, and uh, I don't know. What's Kevin showing off there? What's he I'm, I'm pretending to tease everybody and be like, I, this. What, what's in my hand here? It's coming up? It's like, could this be? Oh! I mean, oh. it could be anything. It could just you, be a... It could be like motion, a what are you motioning about? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a D, it could be a D brand skin on on anything. I I, I don't know, but <laughs> keep talking. Every I'm listening. Yeah. So go through the specs. What have we heard? What do we uh, know? Well, the specs the specs are. I just went through a little bit of. Let me just pull everything up here. So basically, you get a Snapdragon 625 processor. Uh, you don't get a keyboard, obviously, because of the. Uh, Full touch screen, you get a 5.5 inch display, you get four gigabytes of RAM, you get 32 gigabytes of storage, an eight megapixel front facing camera, 12 megapixel rear facing camera, 4,000 milliamp battery, and waterproof and well, water resistant. I don't want to say waterproof. You had me at 4,000 milliamp battery, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's, and that's it, that's what we wanted big batteries. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, given given the life of the of the key one, any key one user who is currently using that device and knows, uh, you know, the battery life on that, just think about that in comparison to the key one. The, the like the BlackBerry Motion is probably going to last you like two freaking days. Uh, <laughs> it does have a slightly bigger screen, right? There are more pixels to to light up, but yeah, I would assume it's still going to be more battery life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it does have 32 gigabytes of storage, so that's pretty standard. Um, what else? Uh, USB-C, of course, Quick Charge 3.0. Um, Do the we cool know the thing, price points or carriers yet, or that's still a mystery? Uh, well, I mean, you can go by the price point. The price point, it, it's not really fair to do a direct or direct conversion on it. Um, so the, the price point is basically it's in Dubai and stuff right now for... I think it's available right, which, from Axiom. Which was kind of the interesting thing. So the device, we saw it leak, like, I forget. I mean, my days are all confused now. But basically, like, Evan Blast dropped a leak 
on Twitter with I think the name of the device. Well, and then yeah. and then a and then a couple of days later, it basically got announced at the Jitex in Dubai. Or how tight was that? It was pretty close after. Yeah, it was. I think it was only like two days after. But basically, before that, I mean, the device was popping up here and there. We saw the back of the device in a few leaked leaked shots and stuff like that. Uh, but then it got uh, announced at Jitex. <laughs> What could, what could it be? It's not being weird. I'm know. just doing, I'm working out. I'm in, mo, I'm in motion. Oh boy. Yeah. It's so heavy. Um, so basically, once, once the name ended up getting out there, it was time to go ahead and announce it. They announced it at Jitex. So basically, uh, when, it, when it comes to the, the launch, be, they only announced right now anyways, they only announced Saudi Arabia and uh, United Emirates. But there are more places that are going to end up uh, having it, but we still have to uh, essentially right. wait. For I, it the sounds whole like list. it sounds like uh, select markets is kind of the the term that was used, right? Yeah. And, the, so I'm curious to see how. I mean, to me, it seems like key, key one is still the device, right? Key one is like the phone that they want to push, and this is going to hit some places, but maybe not everything. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't think. I don't think they expected the kind of impact that it actually had. Like going through, like, just to just to put it out there, our BlackBerry Motion forms are open as well. Um, going through the BlackBerry Motion forms on CrackBerry, I mean, there's a lot of people that are actually wanting this, wanting the BlackBerry Motion. It's like I don't think that they expected the response in terms of how many people would actually want it that they had. So they 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 announced it with select markets, but maybe. Maybe maybe they'll be forced to roll it out to more. <laughs> turn on turn on the motion making machine, please. We need more motions. Down right? maybe, the line. Yeah. maybe they'll be forced to roll it out to more markets, but well, um, it's it's interesting because obviously, so from your perspective, um, and you use the DTEC sixty, you know, how does this sort of stack up for you? I mean, it's a slightly different type of device, right? Like the DTEC sixty was sort of. I always bugged it as like being the unBlackberry, but it had pretty good specs on it, and this yeah, it feels like much more. Specs. It had pretty good specs. I mean, when it comes to full touch devices, I mean, I re I like the look of the motion. I like, I when I first started seeing the home button, I was kind of like, oh, why did they put the BlackBerry <laughs> logo there? That looks kind of cheesy. But it really is one of them things that kind of grows on you. I'm like, oh well, it's it's kind of cool. It's I mean, better than better than the it. other one. It's because grown on me, is it? The motion. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, realistically, when I think about it, is that like, I guess they were kind of listening to some of the, the consumer feedback because all the feedback that was basically put out since TCL was doing devices with the with the key one, the DTEC 50 and the DTEC 60, it's like, where's the BlackBerry logo? It needs a BlackBerry right, yeah. logo. Yeah, where's the logo? Where's the logo? Right? Put it on. So I guess. I say, like, I think it, it, sorry to cut you off, Blaze. I feel like both the key one and maybe the motion suffer from something it's something i actually think tesla suffers from which is weird i don't know how to explain it but that's my example they look better in real life than they photograph oh yeah like when you see the, yeah you see the key one in photos you're kind of like oh it looks a little bit like it's going to be super huge because the proportion yeah, yeah. of the screen to the totally. keyboard and in real life everybody's like this thing is like sexy beast yes. and when i think you see maybe the motion in photos you're a little bit like ah, oh, that looks cheap with the the you know the button on the the BlackBerry logo on the button, but then you see it in real life. I'm assuming, and you're gonna be like, wow, that looks pretty classy the way it's integrated. So, yeah, and you're right. The key I, I don't one know. Is... I don't know. I'm just saying maybe, maybe that's, <laughs> that's just what I would assume it would I'd feel like based on the key one definitive. definitely suffers from that because they're in in photos and stuff like that. It looks like a really tall device. Like you, people would look at that and say, "Oh, who's that for? A freaking giant?" It's not. It's not really a tall device when you have it in your hands, and it looks way better than what the the renders and even the yeah, photos like, show. Like if I were to put the key one and the motion side by side right now, just hypothetically speaking, of course, <laughs> um, I would probably say the motion is maybe like. A quarter, three eighths of an inch taller would be my my just assumption. While I compare some mock-ups I've created off of dimensions. And I mean, just by going by my hands, you can see the yeah. size there. I mean, that's <laughs> totally acceptable to me. It's not overly tall. Adam, I love your head shaking this episode. It's maybe my favorite thing of all time. It's fun though because like, Wait, if I don't say anything and you guys are talking, then nobody can see me shaking my head at you. And I just <laughs> want to point out that. 
I took the last commenter to heart from our last podcast because he said I like brought down the show and made it seem like I didn't want to be here. So I made it a point to stand for this one so that I don't fall asleep or anything and I can be actively <laughs> engaged and excited. <laughs> I just think I think you look fantastic. You're very spelt. Well, you look you I got just want people to know that I, when I take the I comments. I just want to know one thing. Is the is the camera still stuck on Kevin or did we No, no, it was it's it, not. It, it, it probably was wasn't the beginning. The, it was for the first minute and I turned it off. I have like a little checklist now that says don't be a douche. And, <laughs> and, and it's then not all about you. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I don't know. There's uh, there's a few things with the motion as well that they added to the software. I actually um, think it's all about place. That's why right. the show is, should be always all about place. I just won't talk. I'll just be here to keep everything on track. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. No, I think we take it's beautiful. Time. So the BlackBerry Motion actually features two like locker modes or storage modes that you have. Uh, on the device and built into the operating system as part of Android. So uh, basically it has like a locker mode and I'll read it out to you guys how they describe it as soon as I find it here again. <laughs> I know how I'm going to describe it as soon as you're done reading and then we'll see oh, if yeah, everybody that's, agrees. <laughs> I, that's, I'm, doing, I'm doing the proper way for the sake of it. <laughs> Let's do it, please. Uh, Read it out. So give me, like, give us the, it says give us locker the mode. mode. Not all pictures are meant to be shared. On locker mode, you can take photos of weekend escapades, private selfies, or confidential documents with finger <laughs> with the fingerprint sensor. And these images are password protected and not uploaded to the cloud. Uh, so can I say it? Can I say it? Can we yeah, do it? Three, two, ahead, one. Ahead, Three, two, one. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's totally meant for your. <laughs> yeah. So between that and privacy mode, like the privacy shade, you're just good to go. Yeah, Black, yeah. So Blackberry yeah, doesn't judge what you do with your privacy. That's what it's all about. And I mean, there's there's something to be said about it not actually uploading directly to the cloud because I mean, when you have Google Photos and stuff like that running in the background, uh, you don't you don't want that stuff uploading to the to Google Photos. Next thing you know, you're scrolling through your Google Photos and you, you know, you see some nudies, and you're like, "Oh, what the hell? I don't want to be sitting next to Kevin's two more Adam scrolling through." And it's you're true. like, oh, "Bro, what are you doing on your phone?" Plus, <laughs> plus, the way that you know how good Google Photos is when you search for stuff. Yeah. Like, so this is the biggest thing that's freaked me out recently because you know you can associate a person's face in Google Photos, like it starts to recognize people, and then you can program like, "This is Adam. This is Blaze. This is my wife Erica," etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I may or may not have some nudies of my significant other on the phone. And somewhere you can't see her face. You know, yeah. she's like head down a little bit. However, if I search for her name, it still finds her, which means it's like measuring not just your face. I think it's measuring like shoulder oh, dimension, boobs, da, 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 da. <laughs> And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, you know, having a locker mode is maybe not a bad thing. Yeah, and I mean they included stuff like uh, you know for for documents too, so your documents are safe and secure. You don't have to worry about <laughs> uploading them directly there. Uh, the other thing that they included was um, they basically expanded upon the usage of the the BlackBerry convenience key too. So rather, uh, I mean everybody has become accustomed to tapping on the convenience key and letting you know whatever whatever app or whatever thing it is set up that you want to have it set to. Everybody's familiar with that, but um, what they basically did on the motion, rather than just having it, you know, technically serve like one singular purpose, the the BlackBerry convenience key now has like uh, uh, four customizable profiles. So uh, if you're at home, you can have it set up for one profile. If you're in the car, you can have it set up for another profile. Same with the office, and there's like a, a custom user profile. And is um, that based off of then? It's not. Is it's not geo location. It's actually based off the network you're connecting to, like home Wi-Fi, car Bluetooth, office Wi-Fi. Or yeah, like, exactly. And yeah. Um, it, you know, like if your meetings are scheduled to the hub and stuff like that, uh, it will automatically push that stuff out to the forefront. So if so I want to like record, and if I'm in a meeting and I just want to record the meeting, it's like okay, you're in a calendar appointment, and the convenience key turns on a recorder or something. Yeah, something like that. I mean, whatever, however you configure it. But that's that's probably the best part of it is that the you, you have the option of those four profiles, but you also have the option of making them customizable so, to suit we, your needs. So, do we think is there been any like uh, do we think those features will come to Key One eventually, or is that a motion exclusive thing? 
No, I think it's one of those things that will eventually. I here's the thing. I I'm pretty certain that locker and locker mode and all that stuff will go there. I'm not entirely certain. The thing that I'm not entirely certain about is the convenience key additions. I know locker mode and the file manager and all that stuff will go to key one. But maybe I they do it when because key one's going to get Oreo, and I'm assuming yeah. motion will get Oreo. So maybe they do it at the same time then or something. Yeah, maybe. and that's the thing is that like they they announced Oreo for the key one, but they didn't actually give a time frame for it or any you know any basis of when it would be rolling out to users. Kevin's so. not going to eat food until Oreo comes <laughs> to the key one. I I really hope I hope that they go ahead and they push both out. Um, the the locker mode and the convenience key enhancements that would be awesome, um, but if not, I mean, locker mode in its own right is one of those things where it's pretty cool to have. I, I like that they're differentiating with software in an actual way that like fits the brand. I mean, it's funny. I know when the privacy shade got announced, some people poked like the Android Central crew blocked it up, and they were like, "This is insane! Like, this is a crazy feature." The yeah. thing is, I actually use it. Like, it is, it is what I have my convenience key set to on this thing. And um, and I don't know, I actually find myself using it. And I, I never thought I would. I've never been the guy who has like a dark screen protector on his phone where if you're not dead on, you can't see it. <laughs> but but somehow I like it. And um, I, I, I like that they're going down. Like locker mode is a step in that direction too. Just more privacy to good, good timing. The world's kind of gone crazy in 2017, so. This privacy security story is definitely in BlackBerry's favor. Yeah, yeah that's big sellers for a lot of people, especially like the privacy shade. I mean, I don't commute at all, but like if you're sitting on the subway or something, you know, and you're like packed in there in the morning, like even if you're standing oh, yeah. up, you can just have it, you know, yeah. so nobody can see your stuff. But I do remember those screens they used to have for whatever phone, you're probably BlackBerry's, but it was like the little privacy screen that would be on there and you had to be like exactly in front of it. But it's yeah. kind of like that, yeah. just, you know, beefed up for the future. But I think it's cool features and all that stuff and locker mode and everything. I think people are going to, really find uses for as you go further. I like it. Blaze, yeah. what else on the motion? You've crushed this segment. This has been bla the Blaze and Blackberry motion. By <laughs> Blaze and motion. Uh, I think Blaze that's pretty motion. much it. I mean, that's all that we have in terms of everything that's going on now. Like I said, the Blackberry motion forms are open. So if you guys want to go ahead and jump into any of that discussion, definitely get in there and, uh, you know, once well, once we know where more once we know when it hits more carriers and stuff like that then uh, or retail outlets we'll let you guys I, I just want to say I really like the name I think it's uh, motivating you know it really inspired me to get in motion this past few few weeks so I like that I like that it's kind of I don't think it's intentional but it's probably like it's nostalgic it's nostalgic to us right it's like research in motion blackberry motion like it's total nostalgic so you know, and I think it, it gives it a bit of a lifestyle fee feel, um, which is good. Although I do like the people who, I forget who said it first, but they said they should have called it the key nun because it's <laughs> got no keys. And I'm like, actually, that's pretty clever. So yeah. Blackberry Motion. Um, what should we talk about next? We don't need to read any ads out because we did it all in the beginning. Uh, I can talk about this hat, though. Do you want to know what this hat is from? Yeah, because it, it has a black wondering tie why in. it actually what it actually says. So it says make out the script. <laughs> so it says Vlepo, V L E E P O, it's, and it's Italian. The story <laughs> it's actually Greek, but the story here is: Do you remember uh, Torch Mobile? Yeah, yes. they basically built the browser for black. Yeah, Bear. so you had two brothers there who who like founded Torch, and Torch got acquired by BlackBerry. And there's like George and Matthew Steakhouse, Steakhouse. I probably say it wrong all the time. And uh, I'm friend, I've been friends with both of them for years. And and Matthew, uh, you know, I hang out a lot, especially if I go to Toronto, etc. And he's been working on this startup called Vlipo for I don't know, probably a year and a half now. And uh, you can take a look at Vlipo.com. They're currently in beta. You can apply for their beta on iOS, and it's coming soon to Android. Uh, I don't use an iPhone, so I can't actually use Vlipo. But I was in Toronto right before I went to Miami, and I stole a hat from him because I like the way it fit. And then I've just found myself wearing it. Um, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of like a next generation, I'd almost say like group me meets Reddit, um, you know, with sort of like thematic group chats, which is pretty cool. Like if you think about when we would go to Blackberry World, and maybe we use something like a BBM channel um, to stay in contact, 
but you know, once you're done with the channel, like you kind of lose it, it drops off, da, da 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 da. This almost becomes like a better archive of your life. So like during that week, you would all be in there. You could group message, you could IM each other, you could share photos, videos, you know, links, whatever else. Um, they could be private or public. They could be free or paid, all that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, and then like if something ends, like that type of event, you just let it sit there. And you know, three years later, you could be like, you know, Blackberry World or Land or whatever, and you know, the search will pull everything up. And it's it's really like a good life archive of sorts probably a bad explanation but that explains the hat that wasn't they didn't pay us any money damn it but i guess we'll i got a free hat so there's my sponsorship <laughs> message for the day um if you're uh, interested fleetpo.com and now everybody knows what it says there you go so what should we talk about now uh why isn't it on android <laughs> I, I, it's coming i told them i'm not using it unless there's android so they have that version coming soonish it's just i know the the first beta is iOS. I also yelled. I yelled. I was like, "That's silly. It should be on Android." All right. So uh, the key one, uh, just to run through a couple of just quick notes. The key one dropped in a bunch of new regions. While well, since our last podcast, since our last podcast was like September, middle September, somewhere around there. So it dropped in the Dominican Republic, Argentina, Russia, Poland. Argentina actually had an awesome launch party. We posted the video on Crackberry. So if you missed that, make sure that you go check that out. Uh, the Key One Black Edition is now available from select, yeah, select retailers in Canada. So Amazon and Blue Shop and CDW have it. Yeah, we're working on getting the Crackberry Canada store back up and running differently yeah. for anybody who's wondering. So stay tuned. We're... We're currently, uh, yeah, going through all the little details there. I can give a longer backstory to that one day soon, but yeah, we'll do that. Maybe we'll I can on another episode. <laughs> but it's coming. Where, where can I get it in the U.S., please? Uh, you can. AT and T, Space Black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> get Blazer Kevin to buy you one in Canada and ship it to you. That was pretty much what I was going to say. That would be the news to buy it because Kevin's not reliable with that sort of transaction. I'm really bad at shipping. Really bad. Neither, <laughs> neither is Blaze. Don't, don't ship it to me. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> shipping. Just, Kevin will forget to buy it. Blaze doesn't leave his house. so yeah, You'll just you'll basically know, buy me. James, James instead. James <laughs> more reliable. If anybody is listening to this podcast who lives in Canada and you want Adam Zeiss to be your best friend forever, <laughs> just email him at probably, what is it? Adam at mobilenations.com. Yeah. And just be like, hey, Adam, I'll help you out. And then he'll he'll work with you so you can buy him one and ship it to him. Thanks for you going. Solved. Yeah. We're solving all the problems, Adam. We'll we'll ship problem. it to James Falconer. <laughs> he, he's reliable. Yeah. He actually Falconer, Yeah. Our <laughs> manager, James Falconer, is by far the most reliable person in the <laughs> Mobile Nations team. So, yeah. <laughs> Bye, James. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's key one news. Um, if you're using BBM on Android or iOS right now, that's pretty messed up. So <laughs> probably probably don't use BBM on Android or iOS right at the present moment. What's the okay, what is the story? What what's wrong? Uh, honestly, I don't know what the full backstory is because BlackBerry BlackBerry well not even BlackBerry is so messed up. Uh, BBM. On Android and iOS isn't necessarily run by BlackBerry anymore, so it's on its own, but they still have integration with BlackBerry and everything like that. But um, some accounts basically uh, two or three days ago started just automatically logging out, and whenever anybody tried to log back into them, it would, it would tell them, like, your information is wrong, please reset your password, or, you know, it would give, like, a temporary server error. Uh, apparently, there's some correlation between those who were on BlackBerry Enterprise and those who moved to Android and those who moved to iOS, and things just got all, you know, messed up somewhere in the back end. And BlackBerry, uh, or sorry, BBM has been going through and correcting all of this stuff. Um, it seems like they got a handle on it now. So your accounts, if you if you're unable to log into your account, the best thing to do is reach out to BBM on Twitter and uh, let them be able to go ahead and help you out with it because it's not something that, you know, you can you can automatically fix yourself. Uh, so just reach out to them if you're still having issues at this point, but it does seem as though that it's starting to get corrected. I would be curious to know of the podcast listeners, how many are still like active every day on BBM? I don't know, man, but it's, it, with, it uh, seemed like a pretty big outcry when it comes down to like, I mean, sure. it's not, it's not like, 
it's not like the days where like when BBM was down, you have like somebody posting in the forums in two minutes, like less yeah, than yeah, of two course. minutes. And there'd be a newsletter coming out. I remember there was a newsletter that would tell you when BBM was down or any Blackberry service. Remember we had like data, data outages.com. Yeah. That was, that was like the biggest yeah. thing. It was like there was a whole site dedicated to that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Regions nowadays, but... nowadays uh, an issue could be happening on BBM and people don't hear about it for two days. And then all of a sudden it becomes news. And then it's like, oh, well, I didn't even know. So <laughs> shows you how much I'm using BBM. <laughs> But Love it. I mean, it, the thing is, is that the the people who who are who are still using BBM are obviously still pissed about it because you know it, it messed up a lot of their groups, it messed up their channels, uh, it messed up all of their contacts. So, uh, you know, if you're still using BBM, make sure that you reach out to BBM on Twitter and uh, they can help you get it sorted out. Do you know if it affected the hot girls in yoga pants BBM channel? Yeah. No, that was hot guys. <laughs> okay. It was me, dude. I deleted that years ago. It was uh, sure channel you were following. Uh, um, some other very, uh, I mean, it, it's important news. It's exciting as a Canadian, I guess. There's a certain <laughs> amount of Canadian pride there. Uh, but given I don't drive and I still ride the bus and wear Nikes, uh, BlackBerry's QNX autonomous vehicle actually drove on public roads all by yes. itself. So everybody That's was cool. hand free. Uh, in Ottawa, so basically the the Ottawa the Ontario government has everything all set up so um, that there's funding going on for their autonomous drive vehicles and stuff like that. Like Ottawa is the happening spot for when it comes to autonomous vehicle uh, testing in Canada. Um, That's cool. In the U.S., it's different. It's varies across different states. Arizona is one of the top states for uh, for. Uh, testing in the U.S. Every time I go to Arizona, I see Waymo cars and Google cars. I see Apple Maps cars. I see all kinds of stuff there. It's crazy. It's actually kind of crazy how much you can see in Arizona when it comes to autonomous cars. Um, even the Ubers drive themselves around. It's pretty nuts. Crazy. Um, and BlackBerry yeah. moved to the New York Stock Exchange, I saw. Yeah. So they did that. Uh, I think that happened yesterday. John Chanton and... Uh, Bunch of people were on hand to open the ring, um, uh, ring, ring the bell. bell ad opening uh, for the New York Stock Exchange. So BlackBerry is, uh, has moved from the NASDAQ to the New York Stock Exchange, and the uh, ticker has sequentially changed. This is BB now on the NASDAQ, so, or sorry, New York Stock Exchange. So anytime you want to follow along with that, you can hit that Sweet. up. Yeah. Did he go on Cheddar afterwards? Did he follow he CBK on Cheddar? No. Cheddar's over. No. He didn't go. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> it's just I had fun there, so leave me alone, Adam. Why can't you just time. let me have a good have a You're like Cheddar Master? He didn't go on Cheddar, but what he did do is he actually spoke to uh, a number of outlets, I mean financial outlets. Um, one of the top places that he hit was the street to be able to go ahead and discuss, you know, where BlackBerry stands in terms of their transition now and why the move to to the New York Stock Exchange, and uh, you know, BlackBerry's in a in a different space at this point. And John basically broke it down and said, you know, that's where our enterprise customers are. That's where our customers are uh, when it comes to software and services and security and cybersecurity. So we're going to to the New York Stock Exchange, and I mean, everybody's like, well, what does it mean when you move to New York Stock Exchange? Well, it's a different exchange. They're still on the Toronto Stock Exchange, but that it's different markets, different levels of, of trading and stuff like that that um, can I'm be. I'm going to take all my financial advice from Blaze going forward. Blaze, where no, should I put? If I have, if I have, uh, no, you should. If I have, if I have thirty-seven dollars right now in my pocket. What should I do with it? Uh, oh, that's a poor decision. Yeah, I think you should use that to buy a couple of mint sim cards. Is what you should do. Yeah. yeah. What if I have thirty-seven hundred dollars? Thirty-seven cards with thirty-seven dollars. Cool. Uh, well, yeah. please, that was fantastic. Sure you, I learned sure so much. Use our too. coupon code from CB Free Ship. <laughs> please, you're doing an yeah, CB Free Ship or go to this. Right? Yeah, Blaze is blazing. This um, is definitely Blaze is blazing. Factory Motion Podcast. I haven't recognized half hour in. I haven't recognized why I'm here yet, but. <laughs>
before the end. Or, of the I mean, mainly moral support. Yeah, so we've been so, just so damn good looking at it. I think it's just to keep things on track and make sure you don't do anything. Keep things stupid. on track, and plus, you know, to give me something occupied, occupied to look at, so that so I don't just have to just go off again. on tangents. I just, I don't see why you can't do these podcasts if I'm not here, because you just proved, Blaze, you're fantastic. Without, I'm pretty sure we did that, and if we find whichever ones it was, you can see the reception wasn't great. For some yeah. reason, people just want to see you and your silly antics. Look, yeah, yeah. realistically, we can do that without you, but the thing is. Is, is that nobody will watch oh, them or listen to them. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It's yes. like, yes. see Kevin. Because <laughs> Kevin's like, oh, I got something down here. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at oh. me. It's so just, I can't. <laughs> see, old Kevin would have had that in a box in the background. Not <laughs> what if I put it in like my back pocket? And then is that more cruel if I like? Well, you can't see your back pocket unless you're trying to show off your tailbone no. in a weird way. I had Does some bad posture. Like your second. playbook used to fit in your back pocket. I don't know. I've got one. Those were days. I've got a playbook kicking on the table of. Oh, there it is, right there. It doesn't take a charge anymore. Oh. Hey, same with mine. I can't charge mine. Yeah, it's not. It sits like it'll turn on, but it has to stay on the power stand, and it just sits at like zero percent. Mine doesn't even do that. I tried stack charging it, and everything it doesn't work. Do you think um, that's a feature that they were like set to just totally shut down after a period of time? Self destruct, mm. possibly. But I doubt it though. I'm kind of surprised they ever turned on in the first place. <laughs> so, <laughs> what uh, I did tweet out yesterday, we were recording a show today so people could toss us questions if they had any. I don't know. I didn't look at them. Uh, oh, know. the first question from Sir Blaze is, how does it feel to go from a C cup down to a solid <laughs> B cup? <laughs> wow. That's uh, right out of the gate. The, way to hit the nail on the head there. Um, my, I actually replied on Twitter already. I said it feels expensive because I – a lot of my clothes are too big and I got to buy like skinny clothes and a smaller man bra for my boobs, my slightly smaller boobs. Oh, uh, Michael Weiners asked if Kevin's going shirtless for the podcast. No, I wore a shirt today. Thank you for asking. Blaze said we banned. Po <laughs> this is all about shirts. Yeah, oh, Kevin much. said if I get a tattoo, I could go. Hmm. Okay. Shirtless. When is Oreo hitting the key one? Uh, we already answered. We don't know, but hopefully we find out soon. It has been confirmed. It just doesn't have a timeline as of yet. So, JRB Audio Video wants to know, I want a dual SIM BlackBerry phone that will have 4G LTE. Any suggestions? I mean, that would just be a key one from Optimus in India, right? Yeah, but then you have to deal with getting it all the way from India, and then there's problems yeah. with the networks and stuff like that. So. Got it. Okay. Um, will the BB Motion come to the United States with the option of dual SIM? We don't Probably know the not. markets yet, and I don't think we've heard anything dual SIM on it. Uh, oh, if the panel could pick one acquisition for BlackBerry to acquire, what would that be? That's an interesting question. I have my answer, but I'll let Adam go first. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Let's hear your Bla answer. I'll on Blaze's mind. answer. It's so obvious. Is it though? It's so obvious. Well, uh, I mean, it's silly, but it's obvious. At this point, at this point, it's been a long time since I sat down and figured out a company that BlackBerry should even acquire because <sighs> of the differences that they're no longer in hardware or anything like that. What's yours? What have you thought I of? Just, uh, I was just gonna say they should buy CrackBerry. Oh. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't a good idea. Well, I didn't say it was a good idea. That's not so <laughs> then, then we, we already won service awards, Blaze. We won like like service awards. Next time, we'll be, just buy it. Um, oh, man, I guess we got to keep working then. I was just hoping for uh <laughs> No, but seriously, though, who... What is it called in business? A golden pair? I wanted a golden parachute. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it seems so amazing. Oh, just like, like a parachute made of gold? Who wouldn't want a parachute made of gold? <laughs> I feel like nobody would because would drop straight to the ground. Yeah, I don't understand why. <laughs> like, how did this term ever – like, it seems like a horrible thing, a golden parachute. Why would seems What's like that? a good way to die. <laughs> yeah. All right, on that note, those are all the questions. So that was short and sweet. Um, should we talk about Adam's weight loss? We can talk about – so no, not that many people care. This is the point in the show where you can stop listening if you don't care about anything that's not black. <laughs> Um, so you, See, you were, Adam was here for a reason. That was your line. That was like, that was my line. boom, I'm out. you nailed it. So you announced when you got to Miami, you announced your fasting for Florida. And I was actually talking with my wife for a while. Basically she was telling me how fat I was. And I was like, well, I can't really argue with you there. 
So I was looking into a bunch of stuff, and our good friend Ryan Negri, who you know we know from way back when, I think he actually sold me my Z30 back in the day, but he had done intermittent fasting, which I had heard about and read about a bunch of times. And I think when you see, you know, rather than just reading books or like reading stuff online, when you have somebody like a physical person who's done something, you know, that worked and shows results, which he had, then it kind of makes it like, you know, oh, I can do that too. Like, and it's not just something that I read about or saw somebody do online. Like I know this person and blah, blah, blah. So I decided to give it a go. And then I think it was like a day or two later and you came up with your whole thing where you're like, oh, I'm going to fast forever. And I was like, of course, Kevin's got to outdo it. Like I was just going to do intermittent fasting, like 16 hours, eight hours, like, you know, every day. And then Kevin's like, I'm not going to eat until I raise a ton of money and I'm going to make bone broth that'll last me four months. So I was like, oh, but then I read the book that you recommended and it was like, you know, the, it was super helpful and everything. And I've been doing it for, I don't know, I guess a month and a half or something like that. I lost 12 pounds so far. I haven't had breakfast in like a month and it's great. Yeah, whoever, whoever said breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I believe they just sold cereal for a living. I, I didn't, haven't Googled it yet, but I don't it's know. Probably <laughs> it was, I, I think if we go back, we will find it as a marketing line and not actually a scientific line. And if you look at probably when that line was invented in the state of the world at the time, and a lot of the other silly things that people said or did or believed, eh, you know, sometimes you got to revisit things. Apple a day keeps the doctor away is BS too. My doctor yeah. chasing me for years. No. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, I had a, definitely a very transformational trip for time from this last podcast till now. Um, kind of an inspired stupid moment, which is typically the type I, I have. I don't know if they're ever, they're never just inspired. They're always like half inspired, half, this is the dumbest thing you've come up with yet. Um, backstory, I was actually in Toronto for a few days before going to Miami where I knew I would be for a few weeks. And you know, I had fun in Toronto and I was actually hanging out with, um, oh, I was hanging out with Matt, Filippo Matt, we'll call him from now on. And we had a nice dinner. And then he was telling me his story. Uh, and Matt, Matthew, for anybody who's seen him, he's a fairly like kind of ripped guy, but he wasn't always like that. And he said what happened to him like eight years ago was he had some sort of stomach virus infection or something that never got really diagnosed. And he like just couldn't eat. So he basically like was forced into fasting for about a month because he literally was just like eating. He just like couldn't do it. So he obviously lost a bunch of weight, but then he also got like kind of super jacked off of it. Like, you know, leaned out and he was still exercising and things. And, you know, then it took him a couple of years. Like he ate like a bird for a long time after that, but he found he actually felt much better, like way more energy, et cetera, et cetera. So that was kind of like put the thought of fasting in my head. And I've heard about intermittent fasting for a long time. I mean, Daniel Rubino, who's our editor on Windows Central, has been doing it for a few years. And it's, uh, you know, Lean Gains has been a thing on Reddit for a while now that kind of popularized it. And you know, there's a bunch of YouTubers. So it wasn't like an un unheard of thing, but I've never really looked at it too, too much. And, you know, then I was flying to Miami and I downloaded a book just to start reading a little bit while... Uh, I was genuinely curious, so I read a little bit more about fasting, and you know that book didn't really. It, it got into intermittent fasting, which is more of eat all your calories for the day within a span of eight hours. Maybe eat at like 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. or you know one and seven, something like that, and then you just don't eat the rest of the day until the next time the next day. But this book was by Dr. Fung. I think it's called um, what is it called? The something guide, the complete guide to fasting, the ultimate guide to fasting a doctor out of Toronto who's a diabetes doctor and he kind of talks about how you know most of us are on our way to type 2 diabetes which you know Kevin probably was and you can go back through 10 <laughs> years of you know videos and photos where you're like Kevin's face is fat now it's really fat now it's a little bit skinnier now he looks this it looks that and you know I can lose weight when because I work out like crazy but then I can put it back on in, in five minutes also and a big part of that is you start to become resistant to insulin and you know, it just, you're, you have so much, your pancreas is producing so much insulin flowing through your body all the time that, you know, weight sticks to you like crazy and, and it's much harder for you to actually access that fat to burn it off. So you end up just kind of, you know, putting more into your liver, burning it off, putting more into your liver, burning it off. And, you know, the yo-yo I've been for a decade happens. And, you know, happy for him, having treated diabetes patients for, for years and years, basically the only way to fix, and, and I'm talking type 2 diabetes, not type 1, which is a different thing. Um, the only way to sort of get your body body's insulin working properly again is to fast. And in his case, he was like, 
you know, if you're extremely on your way to type two diabetes or, ha or, you know, basically have it at that point, almost, you know, if you, if you just don't eat for like three weeks, you know, you're not producing any insulin in your body, it's homeostasis, right? Your body wants to sit at 98.6 degrees Celsius. It knows what it wants to do to be healthy. And if you keep throwing stuff in it all the time, whether it's food, drugs, et cetera, you're just never giving your body that chance to like come back to, to its status quo. So, you know, his take was you can, you can do that and they go through, you know, longer term fast, et cetera, et cetera. But what I realized is, you know, one, it wouldn't kill me to do that kind of thing. Um, you know, people were built for feast and famine, not just feast, 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 feast. You know, most of us have missed like no meals in the span of our lives. We, you know, three times a day or more, you know, plus all the snacking we do. So it's not like you're gonna get malnourished in, this, in, in the scope of a week or the span of a week. And, you know, some little things too, like, you know, I think a lot of us are f afraid that hunger is this thing that's going to build if you miss a meal and you, you know, miss a meal and then you're just going to eat 50,000 calories because you didn't eat for a day. And in reality, you know, hunger kind of comes in waves and passes. And, you know, there's a lot of triggers that like might set it off. And if you, if you kind of remove those triggers, you know, those, you know, hunger pains won't come or they'll pass much quicker. So when I was on the way to Miami, um, and I was thinking about what normally happens to me there, which is I drink way too much and I eat too much and I come back, you know, 10 pounds heavier, very happy, never come back to press. I'll <laughs> tell you that much, but, but that's always what happens. And then in light of, you know, the hurricane damage in Florida and what was happening in uh, Puerto Rico, et cetera. Um, you know, I was like, Oh, I just felt a little bit weird being normal Kevin. So had this idea to, you know, take the thousands of dollars I would normally spend on being a gluttonous pig you know, uh, fundraiser relief efforts, or sorry, hurricane uh, relief efforts. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to do it, let's, you know, see if anybody else in the CB and our social community would, would contribute. And uh, if Kevin's going to do it, let's, uh, you know, put it on video and make a public statement out of it. So then I have to be accountable, not just to myself, but to other people too, which I did. So raised 10 grand and I was ready to like not eat a thing for three weeks. I went about seven days eating maybe just 200 calories a day of like a, a bone marrow broth soup that our uh, amazing design director, David Lundblad, uh, and product director, David Lundblad made for me. He's a bit of a good cook. So that kept me going. And then, you know, some of our other colleagues were maybe concerned that uh, Kevin wasn't going to, they're like, Kevin's got to eat. So they may have nudged, nudged <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Well, wow, Kevin was fine. That was the thing. I was like way more energy, way more on it. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll talk about more of that in a bit. But um, yeah, I was gonna say like memory is better. Um, weird things like my eyesight has improved, which I didn't really think that would be a benefit. Uh, but yeah, all, all positive things. But in the meantime, we raised more money because they're like, Kevin, you need to start eating again or else like we're gonna be really pissed off at you. So we hit our 10K goal and kept going beyond that to almost $14,000. But after a week, I did start eating again a little bit, but um, still fasting. So I went on a strict intermittent fast, 1 p.m., 7 p.m. a day. I would say probably about a third of the food I would normally eat, um, you know, when I go out. I wasn't being super strict on counting calories, but I did avoid carbs, and I still have not had sugar and carbs. You know, I did have a few glasses of, of wine a couple of evenings, which, you know, wine is, can be metabolized as alcohol, and it, it was fine. And, um, you know, bottom line is I worked freaking super well and, you know, I ended up going to the gym pretty much twice a day, uh, cause I'd wake up at 5 30 AM, just go. And then, you know, the ev evenings I had so much energy still, I'm like, well, I'll just go again. And, you know, I knew I had a three week deadline I was kind of sticking to, and it was crazy. You know, I think everybody I worked with, and we actually had, a about 18 members of the mobile nations team out in Miami for a week, uh, sort of halfway through my stint. And they were expecting, you know, Kevin, for them to see Kevin and be, me be like lying in a bed dying because I haven't eaten. And it was the exact opposite. They're like, what the hell happened to you? You're like supercharged. And I'm like, I think I just eat way too much food all the time. And my body is constantly like just trying to get rid of all the stuff I put in it. So all of a sudden, you know, toning it back to, you know, again, probably less than a half of what I would normally consume. Super easy. And, you know, the, the day and leaving that bigger period between eating just makes it super simple. It's the easiest diet I've ever done. Cause it's like, what do you eat for snacks? You don't, <laughs> you just don't. And every meal I did eat, I ate out. I wasn't at home cooking. So I would just look at a menu and make, you know, good, good choices. And I wasn't fair, scared of like fat. You know, I was more so scared of just sugar and carbs. So 
you know, steak and veggies or something like that would be no problem. And, you know, collard greens with some pork rinds, no problem. And it clearly worked. And, you know, your body can produce the, the glucose it needs from, from everything else. And, um, yeah, so it's been awesome. So, you know, on the last day of my trip, I shot a little after video. I weighed in about just like literally 20 pounds lighter. And when I got to Miami, I was about 208 pounds. And most of August, I was actually like 216 after I came back from Beijing. And I was like doing a lot of biking, trying to get my weight down, but not really fixing my eating. And, um, yeah, and now I'm down to like, you know, basically like 190, 189. And, um, I think it'll keep dropping because I'm just continuing with it. And, and it, you know, the, the physical stuff is kind of the bonus. I think what I've been liking is just the, uh, crazy mental games. Like I've been freaking crushing it, uh, you know, just at work, like I wake up and I think skipping breakfast and just going like. My brain is sharp. I go to the gym. I'm sharp. I don't waste time with the eating and being like, oh, my stomach hurts from eating too much, whatever. So, um, yeah, for a transformational week, you know, if you quit listening already, no problem. If you're still listening, uh, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. There you go. The thing you should ever say. But, man, I love food and eating, and somehow I've managed to stick with this. And now I feel just uh, like I've got control of something that maybe I – you know, should have had better control over, over and just feel really, really good. So I think, I think that's the big takeaway for me. Like even, you know, if I don't lose a ton of weight or whatever, it's a lot of it is just the eating, you know, especially I think it's different if people haven't worked at home, you know, they may not know. I know like you have an office that you go to a lot of times, but my fridge is like, you know, 12 right steps away. So <laughs> it's like, if you're sitting here and you're in between something and you're like, you know, I'm bored, what should I do? It's like, Hey, I'll go grab a snack, you know, or I'll go have a meal. Yeah. And then I ended up eating so much. So it's the same thing. Like I've, you know, figured out that I don't need to eat that much during the day to, you know, sustain myself. And I made it through, we went to a uh, Six Flags, which is an amusement park here the other day. And like, I had a, a bagel sandwich for breakfast. And then, you know, I didn't eat lunch because I wasn't hungry for lunch. And like, I made it through the whole day. So I finished that at like 11, you know, and then it was like seven o'clock before I had another meal. And like, it didn't phase me. We were walking around all day, you know, I had like 13,000 steps that day, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, you know, but you just kind of get back to the mindset that you don't <coughs> need to, you know, I, I think of when Kevin was here a couple of years ago, I think it was around Halloween and we had the bowl of candy on the table, you know, and just the oh empty wrappers at the end of the day. And we went out to dinner and like we, you know, we had all these desserts <laughs> and like as soon as we got home, Kevin just passed that on the couch, you know? So I think about <laughs> that stuff and it's like, yeah. but I, I definitely feel, you know, I feel better during the day. I'm not as tired during the day. Like I don't, you know, have like overload from carbs where I just feel like I want to shoot myself. So I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, just lifestyle improvements that come with it, yeah. which is super good. No, it's good. And I think everybody's got their like, uh, you know, nobody's perfect. Everybody's got their things they need to address. But, you know, I think this is I never viewed it as like a problem problem for me at all, where I'm like, Oh, my God, I got to do something about this. And, you know, again, the, the way this popped up was a fairly just seren, I want to say serendipitous, but it was just kind of like, you know, a dinner in Toronto leads to thinking about this that leads to this to this. And I'm like, wow, I'm really glad that happened. Because now I just feel like I'm, you know, I'm a better human being who lets Blaze talk on podcasts for a much longer period of time. <laughs> and then Kevin just talks at the end. I mean, it's fantastico. It's great. Well, I'm so, very happy that you're both on a healthier track. However, so, my iron is low. My potassium is low. My hemoglobin well, is low. We've always said, Blaze, we don't know how long we have you for. So we will, you know, yeah. you'll, we love you lots and you crush it while you're here. Here's the thing, though. I did manage to gain weight, and I actually kept it on. So they had, congratulations! They had to, Love it. Yeah. Way to go. Right? They had. Have to, you ever talked about your special, like, superhuman condition on this podcast for people who don't know? No. I you mean, want to? We've all like we've all. We're, this is like a sharing episode. We're all. Uh, <laughs> you know, Kevin. I don't know. It feels like that now. We might as well be like Tony Robbins. Um, confet. You know, we're we're addressing our demons. Yeah. I guess for Blaze, it's not a demon. I don't, I don't care. I always Adam's just like, Adam's like, Adam's <laughs> like I've got, this podcast got weird. It's over. Okay, it's <laughs> this is the point where I chime in. And say, Next episode, always, actually, say by the bell, I've got to jump off. I've got to jump on a meeting in like three minutes anyways. So, <laughs> Blaze, next episode, we'll talk about how you're like basically superhuman. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, that was a fun podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to all of our many, 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 many sponsors who have made this happen. Check out GameStash and MidSim and BlackBerry and Thrifter and Vlipo, and I think that's it. Anybody you'd like to plug Adam or Blaze? 
I do have fun t-shirts that I get from a subscription company called Woven and it's cool because I don't have to go to the house anymore and they feel good and look good. Wow, that's fantastic. Blaze, how about you? Any new things you'd like to discuss? Uh, no, I think I'm pretty good. All <laughs> right. Well, with that one, uh, we'll be back maybe, uh, you know, maybe even next week or something because I'm actually home until Halloween. So let's see what happens in the next few days. Maybe we'll be able to talk about, you know, things yeah. that are... We can put some like, things in motion. Maybe, maybe we can put some things in, in motion and say 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 more about them. I don't know. I just don't know. I hypothetically brainstorming what we could talk about next week, but maybe maybe there's maybe just maybe, maybe it's, I don't know. Okay, everybody, thanks for listening. Everybody who contributed to the fasting for Florida fundraiser for hurricane relief, Thank you're you. amazing and awesome. Blaze and Adam did not, so they are just okay in my books. But no, I'm kidding. I, I'm just. Oh, did you? Gosh. No, you guys didn't even support me. I don't I support, support any of your antics. It's been too many years. I support you by spreading the the social the word. Love. Yeah, that's true. Okay, you guys are awesome. Support. Also, thanks. Everybody's awesome. Okay, thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed thanks. it. Cheers, guys. Ciao. Later. Ciao. Oh wait, now that means I have to hit a button. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>